Okay, so we are going to go through the process of creating an S3 bucket really quick and giving a uh, user permissions to do something to that bucket. So I'm going to head over to the S3 console by searching for it up here and grabbing the S3 service. And then we can go ahead and just click the create bucket button and I'll roll you through the options here. So the bucket name needs to be globally unique across all buckets that exist in AWS. So it's not specific to your account or anything, it's global. So there's a lot of bucket names that aren't available to you. It'll tell you if your bucket name is not available. I'm gonna to try to make a bucket named my awesome bucket, but that's probably taken. AWS region, typically pick the region that you operate out of. I usually operate out of US East 2, that's where my servers will be, so I'm gonna choose that for where my bucket exists. That reduces bandwidth cost to have your bucket in the same region as your other stuff, your servers that access it. I'm not gonna copy settings from an existing bucket. I'm gonna keep mostly the defaults here. So ACLs disabled is a newer default. ACLs enabled enables ACLs which is a different way to put permissions on your S3 bucket. It's a legacy thing. It's older and not the preferred way anymore. Bucket owner enforced means that if other people and other accounts are allowed to create objects inside of your bucket, they would technically would be the owner of that object. It gets really weird with permissions because all of a sudden you might have an object in your bucket that you don't have permission to read or delete. This keeps it so that any objects in your bucket that are added by users and other accounts, if they happen to have permission to do that, keep you as the owner. Block public access, I generally keep these. There are actually ways to allow users to download files from your bucket using a public URL, even if this option is selected, so that's good to know. But just know that it's a good default to keep your buckets private. Don't have a way for them to be publicly accessible for objects inside of those buckets. Bucket versioning is useful if you're worried about objects in your bucket getting overwritten or deleted in certain cases. Um, versioning lets you restore older versions. Tags, you should tag stuff. I'm gonna skip it for now. Default encryption, so this basically is like uh, disk drive encryption where S3 will encrypt things that you put into S3 wherever they happen to store it. If you enable it, you can do the Amazon S3 provided key or you can do a KMS key, which is key management service. That's a service inside of AWS that lets you create keys, rotate keys, or even generate your own keys. So if you need a level of security that needs that to manage your own encryption keys, you can go ahead and enable that and choose to use your own keys if you'd like. Advanced settings, object lock is a way to make sure that objects don't get deleted. I usually disable it, depends on your use case. Let's create this bucket. Again, this is gonna fail because I'm sure this bucket name exists somewhere. So let's just do some random letters after it. Okay, that bucket is created. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like to make permissions for someone to use that bucket. I'm gonna head to security credentials. We're gonna create a new I am user. I'm just gonna name it my bucket user. You can name it anything. This does not have to be globally unique or anything. It's just specific to your account. I want programmatic access. In other words, I want this to generate an access key and a secret access key for me. I'm not gonna add any permissions off the bat here. Tags, you should generally tag stuff. I'll skip it and we can create it. Now, when I create it here, it's gonna give me a new key and secret to use. It's only gonna show it to me here, so I need to record this. Okay, my bucket user exists. Now. I could create a policy and attach that policy to this user, but I'm gonna add an inline policy here instead because it's a little simpler. I'll go straight to the JSON tab and I'm gonna copy and paste a JSON policy document here. Now, where did I get that? I'm gonna use this with Laravel. So I'm gonna use the fly system uh, system, which is the storage system used in Laravel. The S3 adapter specifically has a policy document for IAM permissions that it provides you for all the possible API calls that this system will make into AWS. So that's where I got that policy document. So it's going to allow these API actions, these are API calls into the S3 API that this is allowing for a specific bucket. And in this case, it's my awesome bucket, but remember we named that bucket something specific. In my case, it was my awesome bucket and whatever these extra letters are. Some of these API calls are against the bucket itself and some API calls are against the objects inside of that bucket. And that's why we have two items in this resource array because gets object and put object, replicate object, delete object, those are all against specific objects in here, but list bucket is an API call that is used or ran against the bucket itself, not the objects inside of it. Okay, so review that policy and we will create a name for this policy. And that policy is now attached to this I am user named my bucket user. When I use the credentials related to my bucket user to talk to the AWS API, I'll have these permissions. These permissions will be applied to that user. So I can do all these S3 actions against this bucket. Let's just do a quick test of that. I'm gonna head over to a terminal here and paste in a command. 
we're going to set some environment variables for the key and secret key that we were just given when we created that user. And we're going to use the AWS command. Say the region is US East 2, use the S3 API. We're going to copy a file that exists here called test.txt and upload it to our bucket. My awesome bucket, blah, 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 test.txt. And that worked. That was uploaded. So behind the scenes, this copy command is going to make sure this bucket exists and it's going to do the API operation puts file here behind the scenes. So we have permission to do this. That worked. That file is now in the S3 bucket. 